Greetings and welcome to the Fan Perspective. I'm your host Nathan Nile, and this is WNBA Weekly, the show where twice a week, usually on Mondays and Fridays, I talk about things that have happened recently in the association and things I'm looking forward to in the upcoming days. So let's get this episode started with the big news first that they have announced the draft lottery, the time, and the channel that it'll be aired on. And this one seems like it's actually going to be exciting because of both the rule changes and because it's Beast Do Senior Season. So. Check out, link in the description for all the details. Be sure to check that out. I know I'm going to be watching it, just in case. Because there's still a chance, even though we might not be the favorites to win it, there's still a chance that the Stars can get that number one pick. Ah, uh, this is going to be the most exciting draft lottery I've ever seen. Then, look, let's get to some of the news from all the games that were played this week. First of all, on Tuesday, you had the Battle of the Benches as Angel McCautry and Sugar Rogers came off the bench to lead their team in points. The game goes into overtime. Liberty were able to grind it out to the win. And then you have the Fever. They had a great all-around performances, contributions from everybody. They go on to win the game, clinching their 11th straight playoff berth, which is a WNBA record. The previous, NBA, the previous record was set 10, which was originally set by Seattle during Tina Thompson's final season. And then last year, Indiana tied that record, and this year, they broke it. 11 consecutive trips to the WNBA playoffs. Congratulations, Indiana. And unfortunately for the Connecticut Sun, they, will be, they are officially eliminated from playoff contention, so they're going to be in the draft lottery again. How many consecutive years is that for them? Is there a record for that? I'm going to have to look that up before I go before I go to bed today. Then on Wednesday, you have the Lynx showing all-around domination as they you know get a commanding win over the Mystics on Wednesday. Then on Thursday, you had a lot of exciting games. The Sky came out on fire, and they were in control for much of the game, leading by 20 points for a very long period of time. And Deladon, Quigley, and Vanderson combined for 59 points. The New York Liberty, they had 60 total points at the end of the game. So you had three girls basically outscore an entire team. So Chicago, they get the win, obviously. And then you have Odyssey Sims. She continues to pour on the points, you know, and she helps guide the Shock to their sixth consecutive win. They seem to have gotten their shit straight. And then you've got, you know, the Mystics. They had six players in double figures, and they came out on fire. They were shooting over 80% from the field in the first half, six of seven from three-point range. Even, you know, Dolson was hitting three-pointers. You know, Misaman had three-pointers. Everybody was shooting three-pointers. All five players on the floor were just busting it from beyond the line. And then the second half, the Sparks came fighting back. NECA made her return. She's missed the last, I think, six or seven games with concussion-like symptoms. You know, she and Candace both had big double doubles. They had over 50 points on their own, and they helped carry the Sparks to a, a huge lead, which the Mystics started cutting into with some big shots at the end. But LA is able to hold on to the and win by two points, 93 to 91. And the Mystics, four game road trip, they are currently 0 3 on that road trip, with their last road game going to be played, well, fairly soon. And actually, that brings us to, to a couple of big things before we get into next week's games. Uh, the weekend's games, I mean. We've got the, the Washington Mystics. You know, Atlanta is still in the fight, but you know, they basically have to win out. Well, they, no, they ha Atlanta would have to win out and the Mystics would have to lose out. So Washington, they are one win or one Atlanta loss away from getting into the playoffs. From officially clinching their third straight playoff berth. And then you also have the the Sparks and the Storm. And the magic number here is two. Either two wins by the Sparks, two losses by the Storm, or I think just one win by the Sparks and one loss by the Storm. Any, any of those happen, and L.A. is in the playoffs. And they also have a chance to get the third seed. But the Shock would have to lose all their remaining game and the Sparks would have to win all their remaining games in order for them to rise up to number three. It could happen, it doesn't seem likely at this point. So with all those things in mind, let's move on to the a few of the games being played this week. As always, I will tell you which ones are being broadcast nationally. For the rest, be sure to check out check your local listings or you can catch every single game on WNBA Live Access. 
and of course I, the times I'm telling you are Eastern Standard Time so make sure to adjust for whatever time zone you're in. So we'll start with the big, a few big games being played on Friday. You've got Indiana at Minnesota at 8 p.m. These teams have a history together. They've met in the finals. You've got Tamika versus Maya. That's going to be a great duel. And then you've also got Connecticut at San Antonio at 8 p.m. Two teams that have both been officially eliminated already. They're going to be fighting each in the, They're going to be going against each other in the lottery. So if you can watch this game if you want to. I I plan on checking it out, but. Uh, uh, so anyways, moving on to Saturday, you've got Phoenix at San Antonio, 8 p.m. And the Mercury, they're mostly fighting for seeding. Uh, the Stars, they're just hoping to play playoff spoilers right now. Because the Mercury, especially because of the Shock, their winning streak, they're now right back in the fight. They could get back into that second seed. The Mercury, they have a chance, however, it's only a very, very small chance and they would need help from Minnesota. The Mercury could potentially get up to that number one seed. Not, probably not going to happen, you know, I'm not expecting it, but they have a chance to rise up to, to first or fall down to third. So for them, winning is still very important right now. And, you know, I would love it if we could just beat them and just, you know, ruin their hopes. And then on Sunday, you've got a few big games being played. You've got Tulsa, actually no, you've got Seattle at Chicago at 6 p.m. And that one's the only one that's not being broadcast nationally. The rest of them, you've got a triple header on NBA TV starting with Phoenix, no, starting with Washington at Atlanta, that one at 3 p.m. And, you know, these are the two teams fighting for that fourth playoff spot. Atlanta needs the win here, otherwise season's over basically but if they can get a win here then that door is still very wide open and then you've got Tulsa at Los Angeles still t fighting for that third seed you know Los Angeles still has still fighting just to guarantee that playoff berth and then you've got New York at Minnesota uh, once again battle between the number one seeds hopefully playing at home this time Minnesota can give a better performance than what we saw last time because that was just kind of disappointing so, yeah, that's it for this edition of NBA, WNBA Weekly. Tune in next week for another honor edition on Monday morning. And until then, this has been the Fan Perspective. I'm your host, Nathan Lau. Have a good weekend. Sorry, I'm a bit tired right now. Yesterday was just a very long day. And I'm just not a morning person to begin with. And I don't have food in me. And it's just... Bye.